All right, everyone, I'm pretty excited to do this one for you today. This is 2022's The Whale. I have no idea what to expect, so warning, spoilers ahead. We open up to a bus stopping in the middle of what seems to be nowhere, and one person hops off. They start walking up the road, towing their suitcase behind them. Elsewhere, we meet Charlie as he conducts an online English class. All of his students are diligently listening, but Charlie's camera is left off. He tells the kids that his laptop's camera is still broken, and he tells them that they're not missing much. After class, Charlie handles some private matters, but his heart starts giving him problems. He fumbles around for a piece of paper with a bit of literature written on it, but it doesn't seem to help. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door, and Charlie tells them to just come in. Thomas has shown quite a sight as he sees what Charlie was watching on his laptop, but more importantly, Charlie tells him to read the passage to him. That would definitely be a shock to the system to walk in on. Amazingly, Thomas reading a review on Moby Dick actually worked. So that's how you stop a heart attack. After Thomas finishes reading, Charlie asks Thomas who he is, and he finds out that he's just a missionary who's going door to door. Charlie tries to act like he's got something more important to do, but he asks Thomas to grab his phone off of the floor. He also has Thomas wait with him to see what happens. Thomas asks him what the passage was, and Charlie explains that it's an essay that he wanted to hear one more time since he thought he might be dying. That's someone who loves what they do. If I had to pick a piece of work to listen to before I die, I'd want someone to start reading the script to Star Wars for me. Any Star Wars that isn't the sequel trilogy. Eventually, Liz gets there to check on Charlie, and he doesn't seem optimistic. His blood pressure is 238 over 134. How's he alive? Thomas watches as Charlie manages to get up to go to the bathroom, but as he goes to leave, Liz stops him. She asks him if he's from the New Life Church, and he explains that the church is actually responsible for killing Charlie's boyfriend. She tells him not to come over anymore this week, because this is probably Charlie's last week alive. When Charlie comes out to the bathroom, Liz tells him that he has congestive heart failure, and he'll be dead by the weekend if he doesn't go to the hospital. Charlie refuses, but Liz keeps warning him after Thomas leaves. Charlie doesn't want to rack up tens of thousands of dollars of debt, though and he's accepted that this is just how it is. It's bad when you'd rather die than live in debt. Choosing between dying and living in debt is amazingly real. I know there are more factors here for Charlie, but that alone is enough for some people. After a moment, Charlie tells Liz that he's hungry, and she reluctantly brings over a bucket of fried chicken. Later that night, Charlie wakes up to reread the Moby Dick essay, and he eventually takes off his shirt and goes to lay down in his bed. The next day is Tuesday, and Charlie sits in his kitchen to eat and start grading essays. After thinking for a moment, he decides to look up what happens with congestive heart failure, but when everything is telling him to call 911, he turns to his snacks instead. Eventually, he makes a call, and he heads to the shower to get himself cleaned up. Later, there's a knock at the door, and this is where Ellie comes in. Charlie tries to catch up with Ellie, and he finds out that she's here because she got suspended at school. Ellie's like the world's worst daughter. Granted, Charlie hasn't done anything to win Dad of the Year, but wow. She only stays after he says he'll pay her and help her with her classes. He's about to give her $120,000. I know he's dying, but still. Ellie still almost walks out on Charlie, but she makes him pass one test. She tells him to walk over to her without his walker. Charlie tries his best, but it's just not good enough. Ellie walks out and leaves him alone. Later that day, Liz stops by to check on Charlie again, and she tries to teach him some methods to get his blood pressure under control. She notices Ellie's essay on the counter, and she tells him that having her around is a terrible idea. Charlie tries to point out that Ellie isn't doing good in life, but Liz doesn't care. Liz makes him promise not to have Ellie back over before she gives him the sub she got him. Suddenly, Charlie starts choking on his food. Every caregiver should be Liz. She handles the Heimlich maneuver on Charlie, and he's at least six times her size. The best nurses and caregivers can work with whatever they've got. After handling that emergency, they go right back to what they were doing. On Wednesday, Charlie handles his online course, and he tries to make sure that people understand how important the lesson is. Afterwards, Charlie goes through some of his old things, and he finds a picture of himself with his boyfriend from before. He decides to go into the bedroom that's locked, but the key turns out to be too much for him. Later, Ellie comes over, and Charlie tries to help her with her essay. Ellie really isn't giving him much to work with, though. When he starts to try and get to know her better, she threatens to leave. But when Charlie tells her that she can still have the money even if she leaves, she questions him why. He tells her that he really does want to get to know her again, but he doesn't want to force any of this. Reasonable boundaries from someone who's been absent, but it could also be looked at as the ultimate guilt trip if you say it to the right person. Case in point, it works. Ellie catches him up on some basic things that he missed, but when she finds the picture of him and his boyfriend, she asks him about why he gained all of his weight. He explains that he put it on after his boyfriend died, and Ellie proves that he remembers how he left her mom to be with his student boyfriend. When Ellie asks how he died, Charlie tells her that he doesn't want to talk about that, and he has her write her honest feelings down for him as he goes to the bathroom. Ellie can hear him crying, but he tells her that he's fine. 
Suddenly, someone knocks at the door and Ellie goes to find Thomas at the door. She lets him in, and she gives him a quick rundown on what she thinks of his cultish religion. Ellie snaps a pic of Thomas and Charlie, and she heads out for the day. Then Thomas sits down to talk about the New Life Church with Charlie. I'm sorry, wasn't he warned that he isn't welcomed there by Liz? In fact, there were just two people in Charlie's house who weren't supposed to be there. Man, Charlie can't follow what he says he'll do. As Thomas talks about New Life, Charlie tells him that there's nothing that he's saying that he doesn't already know. His perception of the Bible is that it's devastating, but Thomas thinks that he's been brought here by God. Charlie tells him that there's something he can do for him, and he actually gets a little laugh out of the fact that Thomas thinks he means something sexual. Instead, Charlie asks Thomas if he finds him disgusting, and Thomas assures him that he doesn't. Charlie has Thomas get the key he dropped earlier, but suddenly Liz arrives just as he asks about his boyfriend. She is not happy to see him there, but she has him stay for a chat. Before that, she has Charlie try out the wheelchair that she brought for him. When Liz takes Thomas out to give him yet another friendly warning, Thomas grows a pair and tells her that Charlie needs God more than ever now. Finally, we're getting some background on this church. Liz has a problem with the church because her father's a big part of it, and he cut off her brother for being gay. In fact, Liz knows that the church is behind her brother's lover being murdered. This church goes hardcore. This is like a modern-day crusade cult. Thomas still won't back down, though, and Liz explodes in his face about how Charlie will be dead in a few days. Charlie is listening, though, and Thomas leaves once they realize this. Liz finishes up some things in the house, and she leaves Charlie so she can get to work. He decides that this is a good time to go into the room that was locked, but the light bulbs out and his new wheelchair won't fit in the door. Later that night, the pizza guy drops off food again, and he takes a moment to introduce himself through the door since he's been delivering food here for a while. Later, Charlie notices the notebook he told Ellie to write in, and he finds a haiku that she wrote about how much she hates everything and everyone. At least he knows that she's paying attention in school. Charlie gets a laugh out of the poem, but this sets his heart off again. He tries repeating the Moby Dick essay to calm him down, but he uses Ellie's poem instead. On Thursday, Ellie shows up for her essays, and he has her wait while he finishes up. He tries to connect with her once again, and he tells her that she can just be angry at him instead of the whole world. She tells him that him leaving her for his boyfriend when she was eight taught her the most important lesson. Charlie tries to explain that he did try to be a part of her life in the beginning, but her mom didn't want him to be a part of her life. Ellie makes them both sandwiches, and Charlie ends up falling asleep in the middle of his. So what does Ellie do? Well, she snoops around, obviously. So we're finally gonna see what's in that other bedroom. It's just a clean bedroom with pictures of Charlie and his boyfriend. Oh, look at that, Thomas is back. Also, Ellie admits that she ground up Ambien in Charlie's sandwich. To top it off, she blackmails Thomas into smoking some weed with her. Oh, fantastic. Ellie takes pride in how easily she can make him feel uncomfortable. Suddenly, she calls him out for not being a missionary from New Life. Thomas locks himself in the back bedroom, and he admits to being a runaway from Waterloo. He really was from another church, but the leader of his church wasn't doing the right thing, so he went off on his own to find his own happiness. Also, he stole from the mission. Ellie starts recording Thomas's confession, and in the end, he admits that he's running out of options. Suddenly, they're interrupted when Liz shows up with Mary. That's Ellie's mother, by the way. Thomas runs out of the apartment, and Mary gets her first good look at Charlie in almost a decade. Eventually, Liz gets Charlie up with an oxygen tank, and she gives Ellie a piece of her mind. Mary calls him out for offering Ellie money, and Liz finds out about the secret account that has $120,000 for Ellie. She's furious that he didn't use that money for health insurance and other needs, and she storms out of the apartment. Then Ellie gives Charlie a good piece of her mind. But when she tells him to just die already, Mary sends her away. Now it's just Mary and Charlie, and the two of them actually act civil towards one another. They admit that they should have been keeping up with each other since they actually don't really hate one another, and Charlie admits that he's made a lot of mistakes concerning the family. Mary admits that she thought Charlie would think that she was a bad parent, but in recent years, she was actually worried for his own safety around her. This is not comforting. What do you do at that point, though? Mary did the only thing she thinks she could do. Mary did the only thing she could think to do. The two of them start arguing with one another, and Mary starts to feel like this is all too familiar. She takes a moment to apologize for the death of his boyfriend, though, and she opens up about one time that she saw him right before he died. She was ready to say so much to him, but instead, she helped him carry some bags to his car. She notices Charlie wheezing, and she asks if there's anyone to call. He tells her that it's gotten worse, and she comes over to listen. Charlie takes this time to reminisce about an old family vacation that they all took, and Mary finds comfort listening to his retelling. He remembers feeling the water on his feet, and they laugh about the memories that came afterwards. He finally tells her that he's dying, and she's furious that he's refusing to take care of himself. Before she leaves, she asks if he needs anything, and she takes his lack of an answer as an answer. He falls asleep afterwards, and I'm forever worried that he's dead every time that he's sleeping. 
If it wasn't for him snoring so hard, I really would think that he's dead. The storm wakes him up, and he drops his cell phone. Suddenly, the pizza guy arrives, and he asks if Charlie's doing okay again. After Charlie tells him that he is, things go back to normal. Only this time when Charlie comes out to get the pizza, he finds that Dan didn't leave yet. Dan's appalled at what he sees, and he runs away. This makes Charlie devour all of the pizza out of anger, and he hops online. In his low moment, he tells his students to write him something honest, and he goes to the fridge to devour even more food. He eats so much that he throws up, and eventually Thomas comes back. He rushes inside, and he comes clean about not being from New Life. Apparently, Ellie tracked down his parents through his old church, and she sent them the pictures and recording. He's not sure if she was trying to hurt him or help him, but it helped him. At least there's one happy ending in this movie. Thomas has been welcomed back by his family with open arms. If this was his story, I feel like this would be our ending, but this isn't. This is not a happy story. Thomas takes one more shot at saving Charlie's soul, and he tells him that God turned his back on Alan because he loved Charlie. After hearing this, Charlie goes into detail about how much Alan and him were in love, and he explains just how much he hopes that God and an afterlife don't exist. He pressures Thomas so much that he admits Charlie is disgusting before Charlie gives him Alan's Bible. Finally, Friday comes, and he teaches his last class since he's being replaced. Some of his students actually wrote honest papers for him, so he's taking a moment to be honest back. He sets up his camera so everyone can see the real him. He tells him that their honest stories are what matters in the end. And then he chucks his laptop. On the off chance that he doesn't die today, what's he going to do for work? What if he makes some sort of miraculous recovery? Well, Liz shows up to check on him, and it's clear that he's not making a miraculous recovery. Liz explains to him that he can't do this anymore, but she sheds a tear when she realizes that these are his final moments. Just then, Ellie barges in and asks to speak with him alone. Liz gives him a final hug, and she heads downstairs to wait. Once they're alone, Ellie is furious that she failed her essay, and he makes her actually read it. When she actually reads it, she recognizes it as an essay she wrote in 8th grade. The essay he's been saving for years was hers. He apologizes for leaving her and Mary, and he tells her that she's absolutely amazing. He tells her that she's the best thing that he's done, and he tells her that she's perfect. His heart starts to fail, and he tells Ellie to read her essay to him one last time. She almost leaves him there to die, but she has a change of heart as she opens the door. She turns back around and reads her essay to Charlie. Charlie decides to use the last bit of strength he has to walk to his daughter on his own. Ellie meets him halfway, and in his last moment, he smiles at her. Then, the credits roll. This was a beautiful masterpiece. There are only four movies that have ever made me tear up, and this is one of them. This is a movie that I won't soon forget. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.